Hello YouTube, this is Keith Kevin Ken. How you doing? How you doing? I hope you're doing well. Time again for the knife of the day. It's the ongoing series that I record Monday through Fridays as we go through my collection one knife at a time, one day at a time. We're still going through the Spyderco knife collection. There's already over a hundred and 60 knives on the playlist go check them out just go check them out the knife of the day today is the spydeco nirvana the spydeco nirvana one of the most i have to say one of the most anticipated spydecos in many years it was released in 2016 it was blade shows Imported Knife of the Year, which is a huge, huge prestigious award. When it got on the uh, Instagram, when the knife was shown, everyone went crazy. It was so highly anticipated, couldn't wait for it. When Eric Glasser showed it off at Blade Show and elsewhere, everyone just went gaga over it. Then it was released. I couldn't wait to get it. I couldn't. I did everything I could to get it as early as possible and did. And I have to tell you, I was super disappointed. <laughs> to the point of just and and I, you know, I'm a grown man. <laughs> I'm older than most of you. Father of 3, grandfather of 5 boys. I I I was so disappointed. I I I almost shed tears in frustration with the knife because I couldn't wait to get it. And when I got it, there were some issues with it. So much so, at first, I opened it up and did my first impressions. And then later, I was like, wow, I'm having troubles opening it. I'm having <laughs> troubles with everything. But now, let's talk about the Nirvana. Some of the issues and how they have, at least for my knife, been resolved. Um, first of all, let's talk about the knife itself. It's a wonderful knife. <laughs> That's after I bashed it, right? And I'll tell you why it's wonderful, and then we'll go and talk about some of the problems and how they were resolved. First of all, remember, Spyderco is a production company. I think what people don't realize and i have early on i've been collecting i'm i'm not a young collector really about three years or so i just went in hyperdrive because i was so excited so i i have four cases of knives uh and really fell in love with spydecos first of all um i admire how spydeco does take change does make changes they do take risks forever i mean for instance sorry for instance they are still selling a lot of paramilitary twos and they know how to do them in all kinds of variations militaries delicas indoras natives mannixes you name it they're still producing them and selling them in big numbers but every year they go and try to do something different. This was one of their something different. They teamed up with Peter Rosenti, the knife maker, and they said, let's make a great knife. And it became the imported knife of the year. The thing about Peter Rosenti's knives is he takes one, one piece of titanium so the big thing is this handle. This is made out of one piece of titanium. Now remember, Peter Rosenti is a well-known custom knife maker. And then he bends it into a masterpiece of a custom knife. Spyderco did this on a production basis. This is not a sprint run. This is one piece of titanium that is contoured, it's 3D, and it ends with a Chris Reeve integral frame lock. That's all one piece. And it is wonderful in the hand. It's just a really nice handle. 
same with the design on it. Everything's great. They have a stone wash clip. It, the clip is only right hand tip up only. Right hand tip up only. That's great. It, this knife right now for me has broken in unbelievable. So you listen to a lot of custom knife makers and they go, hey, don't mess with the knife. It's gonna be difficult at first and then it'll just break in. That's what happened with this. The stick problem was so frustrating. There was so much stick with this knife that it was crazy. Now, as you can see, you can hear it a little, but honestly, the, the stick is gone. It's smooth as silk now. But for a long time, I put this knife, by the way, the most expensive knife that I have purchased from Spydeco and I have close to 300. You know, usually you'll see Spydeco with big manufacturer rec recommended prices. And then when they're sold, they're not that high. This was over $500 from me. I get the break in, it's a production company. And for me, a guy who loves Chris Reeve knives and Browse Blade mid -techs, those are mid techs. This costs as much as a very good uh, Browse Blades knife and a lot more than a Chris Reeve Sabenza. And I expect that kind of perfection when I open it up. And I get that from Spartaco a lot. So I will say that it's a lot smoother. The other thing is, and Spartaco does a lot of frame locks. A lot of my favorite Spydecos have frame locks. This frame lock, I have to always remember to take my fingers off <laughs> of the lock. I, I, you know, I usually just open up a Spydeco and I can do it. But with this knife now, it was so hard to open, not open easy and quick. It's because if you put pressure on this lock bar, it was a problem opening it. So now I just take the, and it's fine. So that was with problems for me. Again, I had one of the earlier ones. I don't know if they solved a lot of those problems. I know a lot of people had the same problems that I have. I had. It is now a very nice knife. I really like it. I don't think it was worth the money because I think the frustrations take off the price tag where with one of my Sabenzas, I have close to 60 Sabenzas. I'm a crazy guy, okay? 60 different Sabenzas and they all work. And I know you can have faulty knives, but when a lot of them... So that's it. I think also I didn't like it because I had high expectations and it didn't meet. But right now, it is a very good knife. If you can find one on the secondary market and they tell you that it's worn in and it doesn't have the, the, the problems with the lock and all that, get it. The blade is S90V steel, um, saber ground, clip point blade. It it uh it's a really nice knife three point not nice blade s90 v is great steel 3.7 inch blade it is a bigger knife but it doesn't feel like it in your hand 8.7 inches total weighs 4.8 ounces 4.8 ounces has the jimping it's a really nice knife it feels good in the hand now someone might come and going man you say it's nice but you don't like it i apologize i i hope i give gave you the reasons why i didn't like it when i got it um the problems with the stick the problems with opening it all of those things the price problem but the difference between me and some of the people you see on YouTube. First, you guys are probably saying they're a lot better. They are. I'm just a normal guy. 
honest, <laughs> I follow about a hundred knife people and I think 99 of them are better and one of them is just as good <laughs> as I am. So I get it. Okay. Uh, but the other difference is I own every single knife that you see. And when you own something to return it, to get rid of it, um, you know, there has to be a real reason for doing that. Uh, mine now has worked through it. If I was borrowing it or someone gave me it to do a review, I would trash it and move on. But now it's part of my collection and I do like it. It has eased up. It is smooth as I showed you um, now. And I'm not one to futz with my knives. Remember? Other people do. I'm sure other people I've, I've seen reviews. I've done this to it. I've done this to it. This is like it was out of the box. It's just now been opened enough to really loosen up and feel nice in the hand. And that's why I have the conflicting review. But I wanted you to know that new out of the box, you might experience the same kind of problems I have. And it's a very expensive knife. If you're going on the secondary market, I wouldn't pay full price or more than, you know, that's something to talk about. Anyway, I'm sorry I rambled a little on because you guys know I love my Spydecos and most of these are very favorable. But when I have a problem with a knife, I want to talk about it. And this one really upset me. But now... It's turned into a pretty good knife. <laughs> it really has. Uh, that, the knife of the day, is the Spydeco Nirvana. I put it up against the Endura and the Para 2. I mean, I'm sorry, Paramilitary 2. So you can see that the size of the blade is about an Endura size. It's a classy carry once you get it broken in. Sorry for the confused review, but I hope you get my thoughts. I, I hope some of them came together for you. You have a perfect day. Don't forget to like these videos. We do them Monday through Friday, and we have a long way to go. Almost a year left going through my collection. Um, so thumb it up. Tell me to keep going doing these knives of the day. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss videos. Keep your pockets full. Goodbye.